Peace of the Lord be with you, and good morning. This is our devotion for Tuesday, November 2nd, and um, the reading for this morning will be from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. And it's morning, so we'll follow the morning order, page 295 in the hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. All right, 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has, been, uh, has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. Everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Let us pray. Holy Father, you have given immense love to us that we can't even understand that we would be called your children. And because you have called us your children, we are your children. As we live in this world, the world does not know us because it does not know you but we give you thanks that we are your children. We give you thanks that what we will be, although it has not yet appeared, will appear when Christ returns and we shall be like him. And because we will be made like him, we will see him as he is. As we have this hope in ourselves, we thank you that you purify us by that hope, just as you are pure. And we ask that you would grant us to live in that purity in all things as you live and reign, one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Um, all right, so so as I said yesterday, this is um, the first thing I'll be doing as we look at each of these passages is why this for all saints. And um, in this one is, is because as saints, you know, the word saint means holy one. And as saints, we have holiness. We have purity, right? And so um, we have that verse in there. Everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. And I want to talk a little bit more about that. But, um, but before I do, I, I want to kind of give, give a little bit of context to, to this, this passage um, and, and kind of talk a little bit about 1 John chapters 1 and 2. I, I was doing some, some reading last week, and interestingly enough, it really had nothing to do with All Saints this week. I just happened to be doing some reading in there. And was was struck by um, by kind of the, the 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 image and the flow uh, that that that, uh, that First John has the image that it conveys and the flow that it has as it does that, and that you have this this beginning where where John says you know we we that which was from the beginning which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes which we looked upon and touched with our heads or excuse me hands concerning the word of life, um, you know this is this is making the point that he's the, the John this is John remember that saw Jesus that was one of the disciples and how he, he saw him and he, and he and he touched him and, and thinking about probably making contact with him after the resurrection and, and that sort of thing and and um, and seeing that life and 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 being struck by it and the reality of what this meant and and so he, he goes on from there and he, and he says that you know we've heard this that this message that we proclaim to you this is first uh, John 1 5 and um, he says but if we walk in the light we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. And if we if we say we have no sin, this is one you know one of those verses we know. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, and if we say we have not sinned, we make Him a liar, and His word is not in us. And so he you know he gets into this this understanding that we have sinned and, and we confess it, and we have forgiveness in life. And then he goes on from that, and he talks about living in these commandments. He says, uh, verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 1, For my, my little children, I'm writing these things so you do, that you may not sin, right? That there's this purity in you that you would not sin. And if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus, Christ the righteous. You know? So thanks be to God, we, you, know, you don't sin. But if you do, you've got this advocate. You don't have to, to um, just fall away into that sin the propitiation of our sins, not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And by this we haven't come to know him if we keep his commandments, right? So there's, 
it, you know, it, it's this this interesting connection between life in God's in Christ's commandments and um, and and and, and the, the life that we have in His forgiveness. Um, whoever says, verse four, I, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word in him, truly the love of God is perfected. By this, we may know that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. We aren't saved. To be clear, we aren't saved by doing God's commandments. But as we have this life in Christ, as we live in this purity, there is this this, this walking that we do in them. And, and, and he goes on to talk about how this commandment is love and, and, and that we don't love the world, Verse uh, chapter 2, verse 15. Do not love the world or the things in the world. You know, don't love the sinful things of this world. Uh, there are a lot of things that it's okay for us to enjoy, but don't, don't love them over and, against, um, over and against God himself. Don't love the created things over the creator. And, and, um, and then he says, uh, chapter 2, verse 28, Now, little children, abide in him. So that when he appears, we may have confidence and not shrink from him in shame at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you may be sure that everyone who practices righteousness, who makes a, a practice of righteousness, has been born of him. Right? And there's this contrast there between the, the making a practice of sin and making a practice of righteousness. And you know, it's, of course, it's not that we don't sin, but this making a practice of sin. Um, and then this ties to this identity that we have in Christ. See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called the children of God. And so we are. We are the children of God. If you are called the child of God, you are the, the child of God. By the Father, when what his word says, it does. And so when he speaks to you as his child, that means you are his child. Uh, thinking about like what Luther says, our Father, what does this mean? With these word God tender, words, God tenderly invites us to believe that we are, are his true children and he is our true father that as dear children we would ask him as dear children ask their dear father right um, and, uh, and so when the word says that we are his children we are his children and the reason why the world does not know us is that it didn't know him you know we're, so so there's this this aspect where the world is does, isn't going to get us and we look around at how the world is 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 changing and and, and you know I, I get so frustrated when I look at, at headlines that that talk about Christians in, in this way or that and and um, you know the, how how they're portrayed as is hateful because of this or hateful because of that and and and, and on the one hand you know do we need to hear that and and and, and um, be repentant of the ways that we could be more gentle and 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 care for people more um, you know, absolutely right but but at the same time, because we should always be repentant, but at the same time, the world isn't going to recognize us. You know, beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. So the world's not going to know us because they're not going to see us. And, and we're not going to appear that way to the whole world until Christ's return. In fact, sometimes we may not even appear like that to ourselves, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him like he is. So that, that's our hope, right? The, the return of Christ and, and our vindication in him. Not our vindication because we've done everything right. We certainly haven't. Um, we, we aren't those without sin. And, and, and uh, yet we have this, this advocate for the Father. I think it's in... Um, uh, Yeah, I was trying to think that it speaks about there being, we have an advocate, but if we do sin, we have an advocate before the Father, and, um, you know, that, that uh, yeah, that, that he, that he, that he, he pleads for us. Did it, maybe I read that already, maybe it was the beginning of chapter 2. Um, yeah, I read that already, chapter, chapter 2, but if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, right? So we have this, this life in him, and, and, and as he promises to return, then, then we know that, that all the sin that we despise in us will be, will be stripped away. And, and, and even the sin we don't despise, because we don't recognize it as the horrid thing that it is, that will be stripped away. And that's our hope. That's our joy. And in that hope, then, everyone who hopes thus in him purifies himself as he is pure. Um, you know, and so that's this purification that we have in Christ. That hope actually purifies us. That hope is faith, it's trust, it, it's, it's, it's leaning on God's word and it, and it cleanses us. 
and um, and then and as just as Christ is pure. And, and there's a way where we can understand that also to mean that, that we, we then live pure lives because of that. We live lives in, in His holiness and not, not in sin. And, uh, and we thank God for that um, because it's, it's, it's a blessing to live in that new life and to be freed, as we heard this past weekend. Uh, if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. And thanks be to God. Amen. All right, we continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.